This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network, where listeners and podcasters come together. Find out more at blueberrywithnoease.com. The Eat Sleep Right podcast is brought to you by Generous Grant from the Built on Dreams Media Network, with additional funding by the Sims Media Foundation, and from the generosity of listeners like you. Stand by, please. Rolling on six Welcome to Lessons on the Writer's Voice. Gain trusted advice and perspective from writers featured on Eat Sleep Write. Use every moment you can learning the craft of writing by listening while on the go, in your car, at the gym, or while you're on break at work. Eat Sleep Write is here to help you become the writer you've dreamed of being. Eat Sleep Write is also brought to you by the generous cooperation of Writers World Facebook group. Join Writers World on Facebook a solicitation-free group for writers of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry, a writing group that concentrates on critiques of posted material. The Importance of Writing the Backstory by Brian Larson, sci-fi editor of Eat Sleep Write, read by Adam Skull. The backstory of a novel can actually make or break the entire project. This is true for both movies and books alike especially in the science fiction genre. The reason why readers choose science fiction over other genres in the first place is they want to leave their cares of the world behind and move into an entirely new world. The science fiction setting in your new world is essential to the definition of sci-fi. It's because the setting has a far more central role. In science fiction, the setting has fewer backdrops for action and description and a higher component related to plot, character, and storyline. The author must still have a decent backstory for their characters. It's the uniqueness of the character and how they will deal with their surroundings. It's your world or setting that will actually move the story along and is what keeps the reader involved in wondering what's going to happen next. It's how your protagonist travels across your world and how they deal with their environments that makes science fiction unique. Your main characters usually have a background. The reader has been shown through the beginning of the story where they come from and they understand how they might behave in certain situations. We mustn't forget creating backstory for some of the lesser characters as well as the main characters. We must present more backstory to make the storyline more believable. When you're world building, it would be good to make some backstory for some of the minor characters. You can use and rely on that later down the road when it's time. You'll find that if you have the material already set up, you tend to use it, and you'll know when it's time. I'll continue with my fictional character, Captain Fitz of the Excalibur for an example. Here's how you could paint some of the character's backstory. Captain Fitz gazed out of the porthole of his cabin in wonder. He thought about the ship's departure time, which was in less than 30 minutes. He grimaced at the stars that shimmered in the distance. Standing, he walked to his liquor cabinet. Grabbing a shot glass, he slowly poured a healthy amount of his finest scotch. Setting the glass on the table in front of him, he simply stared at it. I don't really want to do this now, do I? No, he answered to himself. I don't. So why did you pour it? He gently lifted the glass under his nose and took in the deep, rich fragrance as he swirled the glass. About to put it to his lips and down the elixir, his office door interrupted him with a chime. Returning the glass to the counter with a clink, he turned to address the call. Come! Lieutenant Jameson, the captain's first officer, entered the room and instantly saw the glass. Sir, you don't really want to go there now, do you? Just about the time I think it's okay, I remember. That's right, sir, Jameson said, walking over and taking the glass. You just keep on remembering, too. We don't need you. Lieutenant, I'm quite capable. Yes, sir. Never said you weren't, Jameson answered, pouring the glass down the drain. 
Hey, that's expensive scotch. Not as expensive as what it'll do to you, sir. I wanted to portray that there's something about the captain and his drinking. It may be that he's an alcoholic. What the author will need to do is build up why he's hesitant in taking the shot. What prevents him from partaking every time he pours a glass? Most importantly is when and how you tell your audience. If you reveal too much at once, you lose the effect of suspense. On the other side of the spectrum, if you don't reveal enough, the reader will lose interest in the backstory and forget about this scene. My suggestion is to build it up a bit more and then get back to the main plot movement. As the next chapters develop, you'll know when it's relevant to make more revelations. You'll want to weave the backstory throughout, keeping the reader tuned into the entire story, not just the main plot. I know, I know, Lieutenant. Catherine would never forgive you. Don't think that I will ever forget my own wife's death. No, sir, I just... Jameson, you just keep on reminding me. Yes, sir. I can't let that accident, I can't allow her death, to affect the lives of my crew. We're about to embark on what will likely be the most dangerous assignment we've ever done. Yes, sir. Sir, I came to tell you we're all behind you and we're ready for you on the bridge. You just keep me in check, Mr. Fitz said, locking his precious bottle away. You can count on me, sir. I've given just a tad more backstory, but not so much that the reader understands everything just yet. I want to hold out for another time. I've revealed that Captain Fitz may be an alcoholic and that his wife died in an accident. What I didn't reveal is if he caused the accident or if the death of his wife was the cause of his drinking. How this character responds to the new environment they're about to discover is all shaped by the backstory. If you didn't build backstory, your plot would unfold like this. Captain Fitz gazed out the porthole of his cabin in wonder. He thought about the ship's departure time, which was in less than 30 minutes. He grimaced at the stars that shimmered in the distance. Standing, he walked to his liquor cabinet. Grabbing a shot glass, he slowly poured a healthy amount of his finest scotch. Taking the glass, he simply lifted the glass under his nose and took in its deep, rich fragrance as he swirled the glass. About to put it to his lips and down the elixir, his office door interrupted him with a chime. Returning the glass to the counter with a clink, he turned to address the call. Come. Lieutenant Jameson, the captain's first officer, entered the room. Sir, I came to tell you we're all behind you and we're ready for you on the bridge. You just keep me in check, Mr. Fitz said, locking his precious bottle away. You can count on me, sir. This has a completely different feel to it. Removing the backstory leaves the reader flat. What you don't want to do is have zero backstory to your novel. Take the horror genre. Usually there is a group of teenagers being chased and killed by an evildoer. We don't get to find too much about why the teenagers are at the lake other than for spring break. Nor do we usually get to find out why this madman is chasing someone with a machete. They almost always end up killed in one way or another, and if there's a survivor, you can expect a sequel. This is what sets science fiction apart from other genres, the backstory to your novel. Keep your reader interested with enough backstory intertwined within the main plot. Captain Fitz and his crew may be starting out on an adventure to another part of the galaxy for some specified mission. Keeping enough backstory within the story will make the journey much more interesting. If you're looking for a community that offers tools, support, and advice to start your own adventures in writing, then prepare to have the cauldron of your imagination stirred. I started the Eat Sleep Write podcast so more people could understand what it's like to be a writer and to get more eyes on your books. My goal is to help writers and authors achieve the success they so richly deserve. I salute their success in writing. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Eat Sleep Write podcast located at eatsleepwrite.net. Please send any questions, comments, or suggestions to comments at eatsleepwrite.net. Please consider a donation to support the Eat Sleep Right podcast. Donations can be sent to our PayPal address at donations at eatsleepwrite.net. Once in a lifetime, the theme music for the Eat Sleep Right podcast, courtesy of Stephen Paul. 
All rights reserved. Used by permission. Please join us again for the next edition of the Eat Sleep Right podcast.